Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about rejection, and I want to talk about rejecting people in romantic or sexual situations in a way that is both respectful to them and makes it likely that your boundaries will be respected. The key idea here is that I think there's this common way of rejecting people that I see a lot in our society, and I've experienced it myself. And it's to reject people based on appeal to a category. So for example, people might say things like, I only like you as a friend, or like, I'm not interested in you like that. Those are two of the sorts of phrases that I've heard a lot, and I've heard them directed at me, and I've heard them directed at other people. And I don't think this is a good way of rejecting people. And I want to share some personal stories about why, and why I think it's better to instead to assert specific boundaries with people. So the first story, there's someone I was hanging out with a long time ago, and we were spending a lot of time together one-on-one, -on -one, and I felt very attracted to her. I wasn't particularly attached to being involved with her in a specific way, but I definitely liked spending time with her. And we would cook together, and we would cuddle a lot. So we would like sit together with our arms around each other, like holding hands, and talk about pretty intimate topics. And we had been doing this for some time, and one time I went and I kissed her on the forehead, and she freaked out. She was like, oh my god, what are you doing? I think you have the wrong idea, like, I'm not interested in you like this, I'm not wanting this kind of relationship. And I was like kind of taken aback, because I was like not thinking of this action I was doing towards her, like kissing her in this way, as being a very big deal to me. Like, it didn't seem like much of a change from all the ways in which we were already physically intimate with each other. But the thing is, different people perceive different types of intimacy and physical touch and activities differently. So evidently, for her, this was crossing a major boundary. But the way she responded to it, it involved appeal to this category, and it, it felt kind of bad because it felt like she was assuming something about me that might not have been my intent at all. Like, I wasn't trying to like escalate the level of intimacy, I just was really relaxed and comfortable, and I was doing something that felt very natural for me to do. Uh, I was not attached to the idea of being romantically involved with her, and I'm completely comfortable uh, with her asserting any sort of boundary. But like, the way she talked about it made it seem like I was trying to move things into a sort of romantic direction, or that I had a romantic intent behind my, my actions. And it made me feel pretty bad, uh, and I, I didn't understand this at the time. Like, back then I didn't know how to articulate all these thoughts that were going over. So I don't think I handled or resolved that situation very well. Like, that evening ended pretty awkwardly, and we ended up kind of becoming pretty distant after that point, and we drifted apart. I want to share an example of a situation that went really differently. So, once I went to a party, and I stayed pretty late at the party, and afterwards I went back with one of my friends to crash at her apartment. And we ended up sleeping in the same bed, and she told me, she's like, I'm really comfortable with you, and I really want to cuddle with you, but I don't want to kiss, and I don't want to hold hands. I really like that, because it was asserting a boundary. She was like, hey, this is what I'm comfortable with, this is what I'm not comfortable with. She didn't say anything about what it meant, she didn't say anything about my intent, or her intent, or how that related to sort of cultural categories of like friendship, or relationship, or whatever, and she just talked about what her boundaries were. And so we cuddled together, and we went to sleep, and I woke up, and it was really comfortable. And I felt really comfortable with her, I felt really close to her, um, and we stayed friends, and there was never any awkwardness. Like, I, I felt like I became closer to her because of that experience. And I was thinking, like, it would have been really great in this other experience I had had if the person had kind of asserted a clear boundary with me about like what types of touch she wanted, and what types she didn't. And of course I could have taken the responsibility for that if I had the wisdom and insight that I have now. I could have been like, oh hey, like I'm really sorry for overstepping this boundary, what are the types of touch you're comfortable with, what are the types of touch you're not comfortable with. So like, 
if you're rejected in this sort of categorical way, you can still steer the conversation in the direction of boundaries, which I think is a good thing to do. But like, if you're in a situation and someone oversteps a boundary, I think the, it's really the best way to handle it, to assert a specific boundary, and not to rely on these like categories of like, oh, I just like you as a friend. Because like, what does that mean? I've had people say that to me in response to things that seemed utterly bizarre. Like, for example, when I ask someone if they want to go out to lunch, like in college, like if they want to get lunch in the dining hall, like this is a group setting where like it's likely other people are going to see one of us and sit down together, like I would not think of that as like a date. But apparently some people have reacted that way to me asking that to them. And so like, when, when people do this, it can be off-putting to me, because I'm like, I'm not trying to date you, I'm not trying to express romantic interest, I'm just like, hey, I want to eat, I want to have someone to eat with, do you want to eat at this time in this dining hall? Um, I've had people react that way to me telling them that I care about them. Again, really off-putting, like, I care about all people, I care about you, if you're watching this video and you're human, I definitely care about you, and I like telling people that I care about them. I understand though, some people have this association that like that's a sort of relationship thing that's like more intimate, um, but I still don't like it like when people assume that I necessarily mean a certain thing by saying that. Like, I like telling all people that I care about them, especially my friends. So like, I think though that if someone doesn't like this for whatever reason, I think it's important that they assert a boundary. Same goes for frequency of contact. Like one boundary that people have overstepped with me, and I've also overstepped it with other people, is contacting someone too often. And I think if someone's doing that to you, the best thing to do is to just be like, hey, like, you've been texting me a lot, like, I don't really feel comfortable texting you this often. And you can explain like it's not personal, I just like I don't text very much in general, or like I don't like getting a lot of notifications on my phone. You can say things to make it clear that it's not that you don't like them, it's just that you don't want them texting you as often. And you, I think it's best with something like this if you give a specific frequency, you're like, hey, I feel more comfortable getting like one or two texts a week, or like if you only text me if you're wanting to do a specific thing or you have a specific reason, like I don't really like to chat over text, you can say whatever it is you need to say to communicate your boundary. Uh, I highly recommend doing that. I think that if people would reject people by asserting specific boundaries and not by these sort of appeal to categories, people would have better relationships. Like there would be people who would be able to stay friends instead of having this awkward distancing that can sometimes happen. Um, I also think that people would find that their boundaries are more likely to be respected. Like if someone tells me I don't like you like that, I don't know how to respect their boundaries because I don't know what particular actions or things they interpret as being like relationship things. Uh, does that mean that they don't want me to contact them as much? Does that mean that they don't want to me, me to be as affectionate with them? And if so, like what are the types of affection in, that overstep those boundaries? Like I don't know that and I know for a fact that it's different from one person to the next. So like if someone doesn't tell me that, like it puts me in a really difficult position. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say. So I would encourage you, if you ever feel the impulse to tell someone that I don't like you like that, or like I just think of you as a friend, like think twice before saying that. And like think, what are the boundaries that I really care about? What are the boundaries that I want this other person to respect? And maybe consider asserting those boundaries explicitly. You may find that it leads the other person to feel better and to respect your boundaries better. Yeah, thank you.